Welcome to Port Orange, Florida, where today we're going to be taking a closer look at the former home of Bongo Land. Hi everybody and welcome to the world of Micah and welcome to Port Orange, Florida, right outside of Daytona Beach, near Daytona Beach. Today we're going to be checking out a place called Sugar Mill Gardens from 1948 to 1952. This was known as Bongo Land, an amusement park, a theme park with a miniature train, dinosaurs, they had everything here. This was like one of the first theme parks in Central Florida long before Disney was here in Central Florida. And we're going to see kind of what remains of the former grounds of Bongo Land. Now, let's take a closer look. Now there's a little marker right here talking about the Battle of Dunlawton Plantation, which is what this area is. The Second Seminole War from 1836. The extensive system of sugar plantations on Florida's east coast was eventually destroyed by the Seminole Raids and the sugar industry in this area never recovered. Very interesting. Now before you go into Bongo Land, the old sugar mill gardens, this is the main road right here. There's houses all around this area. And check this out, this probably would have been an old gate to get in to Bongo Land. Not sure what they would have had in this area. I'm kind of hoping I can find where the train used to be. Maybe there's some train tracks. I highly, highly doubt it. Not gonna get my hopes up, but right over here is the main entrance. This might have been the main entrance back when this was Bongo Land. This is it, the entrance to Bongo Land. So the garden hours are from eight to five. It's volunteer. Everything is you know maintained by volunteers. Admission is free. Donations are gratefully accepted. And now we just have to cross the street here and head into the Sugar Mill Gardens. This is wild. We're, we're heading into what was known as Bongo Land. I will tell you guys more about Bongo Land as we venture into the gardens. So this is the Dunlawton Sugar Mill Gardens welcome area here and this is the layout of the land we are here now and we're going to be venturing around to see some of the dinosaurs here from bongo land as you can see and kind of the layout of the whole botanical gardens i love the sounds of these old florida gardens Now I've seen these before. These are the little free libraries. I've seen one of these in Salem, Massachusetts. And it's exactly what you think. It's a free library. People bring in all kinds of reading material, leave them here. You kind of take what you want, return it, bring something else for someone. That's cool. They have one here, right next to the little gazebo. First thing on the list is to visit the Sugar Mill Ruins. Just straight ahead. See what's what's left of the old sugar mill. Look at these giant trees out here too. This is unreal, the hanging moss on this, unreal. Now oh, this is a butterfly garden. Oh, I see a dragonfly, but I'm not seeing any butterflies, I'm sure they're around. You gotta be. They wouldn't call this a, a butterfly garden if it wasn't a, a butterfly garden. Oh, I see one. There's one right there. Somewhere in there fluttering around. So what you were seeing right here was the Dunlawton Sugar Factory. These are the ruins of people's dreams that it says here on the plaque. 1900. Look at that. This lady sitting there. This is what it looked like. That's crazy. I'm trying to see like when this, you know, would have, okay. Dunn and Lawton gave this spot its familiar label in the 1830s, but the plantation began earlier in 1804 when an immigrant from the Bahamas received a 995 acre land this side of the Halifax River. Wow. 
Okay, so this is what it looked like. And this is what it's currently looking like. As you can see, they've added that cover, but the cement and everything over here is what is left. Not much left. Look at that. And then on this side here, too. There are initials and stuff carved into those bricks. Okay, cool. Look at this. Look at that like, little path that goes on under there, underneath. Wow, I think that's what those, those ladies were standing next to in that photo. That's so cool. Look at this, like the whole factory is like still in here. Not much left. Oh yeah, the roof fell in there. I want to say that little chimney thing is right here. Going straight up. Yep, yeah, that's got to be it. Yeah, look at this. You can walk all through here. This was once a sugar mill. Unreal. Unreal. Okay, I think we're gonna venture out more into the gardens and find more of Bongo Land. And now let's talk about what was previously here from 1948 to 1952. Bongo Land. This was a theme park with a miniature train, a replica Seminole village, and prehistoric monsters made by a cement worker, MD Manny Lawrence. Now this is a giant ground sloth, a vegetarian mammal that lived 110,000 years ago. Now you can see his paint long gone from this. He's currently being held up by a tree stump here. This is amazing. Look at this guy, all carved out of cement by Mr. Manny. And it's on this incredible bridge. This bridge is old. I'm talking like Bongo Land days old. So amazing. And look, there's a little fountain over here. Oh, there's like a little tree stump guy. Look at his face. Beautiful, beautiful gardens out here. This is wonderful. This is old Florida. There's a nice little breeze in here today. The tree coverage helps with the sun. The sun is trying to come out today, but this is nice. Bring your bug spray though. But that has been here since 1948 to 1952, somewhere in that era. So a man by the name of Perry Sperber, who was the first dermatologist in Daytona Beach, started Bongo Land. And I'm, I'm sure you're asking why the name Bongo Land? Who was Bongo? What is Bongo? Well, Bongo, was a large baboon that lived here. So he was like, hey, let's just name it after him. Kind of interesting, right? You gotta think, 1948, 1952, there was no Disneyland. There were no things like that, you know? So this guy coming up with a theme park that had a, a miniature train, all kinds of themed things here in Central Florida, he was wise beyond his years. I mean, this man was, was doing stuff here long before Disney. Kind of crazy. Bongo Land unfortunately didn't last long after 1952. Basically, lack of interest. People were not interested in Bongo Land. I don't understand why. Now this place is booming with all kinds of places like Dinosaur World, Sea World, Walt Disney World. We're gonna walk around and try and find some more of the the animals and original dinosaurs and stuff from Bongo Land. I have a few photos. I'm gonna try and match up for you guys, and we're gonna see what else is kind of around in the area, but now you know kind of the backstory of Bongo Land. So there's a little bit of a backstory on this, talking about Bongo Land. Bongo Land at Lost Mission and Old English Sugar Mill, five miles south of Daytona. That's crazy. Oh, and look, that's really cool. One of the 
the dinosaurs they had out here. For years, people enjoyed Bongo Land with its concrete dinosaurs, miniature train, and resident baboon named Bongo. It was a long way from the hard work of frontier sugar making. That's crazy. Like, you know, sugar mill turned into an old theme park. So after the sugar mill, people would use this as backdrops and photographs. That's an old Daytona Beach, Florida postcard. You can see the model, the photographer here, the ladies walking in next to the, the sugar mill. Look at this. That's really cool. We saw that inside. It's talking about girls in beachwear posing for tourism photos here. This place definitely has some history. I'm out here looking and searching for remains of Bongo Land. Where is Bongo Land? I'm trying to find dinosaurs. I have two photographs I've got to match up. I gotta find a Triceratops. And I've also got to find where the T-Rex used to stand. I got to find it. How can I find? Where are you, Bongo Land? Where are you? Walking around here, though, this is amazing. The temperature in here is a little cool. A lot cooler than it is out outside of the, the sugar mill ruins. You got all this tree and foliage kind of keeping it cool in here. I think up here should be a Triceratops. There it is. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Look at this. Bongo land. Oh my goodness gracious. This has been here for so long. Look at this. I gotta touch it. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. How are you? Thank you for standing for this long. Wow. Okay, I've gotta match up this photograph I have. What's interesting about this photograph is the the guy or girl who was standing and taking the photograph would have been standing over on this side because you can see the little girl next to the Triceratops was on his left hand side. He's changed quite a bit. The way it was shot was like this. Right about here. That's unreal. Not sure who the little girl is in the photograph or what year this was taken. It could have been 1948. It could have been all the way up to 1952. But I know that I have a photograph and proof of Bongo Land. Yes! Now I've got to find more of the prehistoric friends. They're somewhere out here. Somewhere in the deepest parts of the former home of Bongo Land. Not sure where the miniature train would be or the the Seminole Village they had. But the dinosaurs, there's three. I read that the T-Rex has fallen, but they still have, I believe, three or four original prehistoric animals out here from those days. You gotta think, like, who was coming out here to Bongo Land? It's gotta be locals. Tourism, I don't think, you know, in those times were really what we think it is. Mostly people going to the beaches, you know, Central Florida was still very much a lot of orange groves. And like the only other theme park that was really in Florida at the time, to my knowledge, was like Cypress Gardens, which opened in 1936. So from 1948 to 1952, if you came over on this side of Florida, heading towards Daytona, New Smyrna, that whole area, you could have Bongo Land to visit. And I'm just thinking like, what was the driving, you know, Thing for families to come out to Bongo Land was it just like oh we're gonna be at the beach might as well stop and see some dinosaurs with the kids maybe and I have found it Bongo Land <laughs> the sign several attempts were made to operate Dunlawton's plantation as a tourist attraction in the 1950s 
Dr. Perry Sperber leased the premises from J. Saxon Lloyd for a park to display prehistoric monsters and had a number of replicas molded in concrete on wire, frames constructed. Manny, Lawrence, and look, do feed the dinosaurs. The knot has been bitten off by this guy, the Stegosaurus from Bongo Land. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness gracious. This has been here for so long. I feel like I'm discovering a dinosaur here for the very first time. I mean, the amount of detail on this thing is pretty impressive for what they were dealing with. Manny was not messing around. You can get a full 360 view of this dinosaur. Wow. Walking around over here, they have a little cutout of a dinosaur here and right over here as well. But the T-Rex that used to sit here has fallen. He is no longer standing here at Bongo Land. It's pretty sad. But look at this. Don't these kind of look like dinosaur eggs? That's incredible. I love that. And I think the T-Rex used to stand right over here because you can see where the feet, I think, used to be. Right there. You see that? I also have a photograph to show you guys. I think the photograph of Dr. Perry Sperber with the T-Rex was taken right here. This is an old, old photograph of original Bongo Land. By the way, if you're keeping up at home, every time I say the name Bongo Land, take a drink of water or eat something or do something because I'm pretty sure I'm saying Bongo Land a million times. I'm just... I love the name, Bongo Land. That just sounds awesome. I've always wanted to come out here and see this, because it's one of those things, as a Floridian, you hear about. Especially if you're in the theme park, you know, history of theme parks, and being able to find an old Florida theme park, it's pretty incredible. Dimetrodon, ferocious meat eater that lived 250 million years ago. Look at this. Look at those teeth. He's been here since Bongo Land days, still holding strong. It kind of reminds me of the Fountain of Youth area in St. Augustine, especially with the hanging moss trees. But it's a really cool little place. I'm just glad I finally got to come out and see where Bongo Land was. No sign of train tracks from the train that used to be here. There is a restroom, a water fountain here. No food or drinks or anything on site. Just heads up on that. But this is it. We have officially seen the former home of Bongo Land. Now if you or anyone in your family or friends ever got to visit Bongo Land when this was operating, comment, let me know. Maybe you have a, a grandmother, a great grandmother, or a grandfather, someone who visited Bongo Land back in its heyday. I'm curious. There's not a whole lot about this place, you know, on the internet. So maybe putting it out there word of mouth and comments, I can learn more about Bongo Land. All right, Bongo Land. This was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun walking around and seeing what remains of this former Florida theme park. But I think our adventure for today has come to an end which means it's time to say goodbye. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the thumbs up button. The next time you were here in Port Orange, Florida, visiting Bongo Land or the Sugar Mill Gardens, tell someone that World of Micah sent you, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Until then, stay weird. Goodbye.